Hi everyone, it's Sherry. I hope that you are having a wonderful day. Y'all, we have another fabulous scrap idea. Stay tuned. Welcome to my channel. I am so glad that you decided to stop by and welcome to all of my new subscribers and thank you so much. And I really mean thank you to everyone who is supporting me in so many wonderful ways. For those of you who have stopped by today and you're not quite sure if you want to subscribe, I hope that by the end of our time today, I will have earned your subscription to my channel. Today, we are using more scraps. And we are going to use those scraps to create some scratch pads, some notepads, or some doodle pads. And the way that I have mine packaged, I have them packaged as a pair. So I have one that is three by five and I have one that is three by three and a quarter. So as always, I'll give you a closer look at these in just a minute, but y'all know what time it is. It's time to make it. All right, y'all, so here's a closer look at today's really awesome project. So I am going to remove it from the packaging and we have a scratch pad, a doodle book, a notebook, whatever you want to call it. And I use scraps for all parts of this project with the exception of the embellishments and the plastic bag. But scrap chipboard, scrap writing paper, scrap decorative paper, it's all scrap. So here is a nice little look at that three by five. And I have 25 sheets per pad. And then here's a look at that three by three and a quarter again. 25 sheets per pad and I'll show you how we do it. So I have 25 sheets of three by three and an eighth inch white paper and all I'm using is standard copier paper, printer paper. It really is that light, light white paper. And then I have 25 sheets of three by five white paper and all of this is scrap. I have two pieces of chipboard that measure five by three and a quarter this is a medium weight chipboard that I have that is scrap. If you don't have chipboard, you can use whatever it is you want, shoe box, cereal box, anything that you want to use that's going to give you a harder board on the outside than just your paper. And then I have two pieces of chipboard that measure three and a quarter by three and three eighths. Then I have a four by six plastic baggie. And now we're getting to our scrap paper. So if you have been crafting with me at all during the month of March, 2022, you will recognize these papers because this is scrap that I had left over from some of the projects that I've done during the month of March. And my scrap pieces really are varying sizes, but I have a piece that measures four by four and a quarter. I have a four by 12 piece. And then for my inside liners, I am going to pull some of this scrap that measures four by 12 and I'll probably use two of these. I have two pieces of that scrap and then I have another piece of scrap that measures five by 11. So really your scrap sizes might be different from mine, but this is what I had. So I decided to build my project around the size scraps that I had available. So I am going to take these and set them to the side because the first thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to go ahead and glue these pages together. So to do that, I am going to take two clips and we're going to place those clips right here at the top. Then I'm going to take my glue and I am just going to drag that glue along the top and then I'll take my fingers and we'll spread that glue and then we just need to let that dry. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the smaller one. So I'm placing my clips. I'm going to add my glue along the top. If you want, you can use hot glue as well by using my reptile adhesive. I have a more permanent stick. You can tear out these pages, but it's not as easy to tear them out as it is if you use hot glue. 
So I do cut my own pads and I cut them down using this industrial cutter right here. And I use an industrial cutter because I do a lot of books. I cut a lot of chipboard and I cut large stacks of paper all at once. It is absolutely not necessary that you have a large cutter such as the one that I just showed you in the picture. So if you want to cut your pads down without using an industrial cutter, here's how you can do it. So basically you just measure off where you want to make your cuts on your paper stacks. Make sure that you have a nice sharp blade in your exacto knife or your finger blade, whatever it is you're going to use to cut. And then you just start cutting through. You don't really have to press down hard. You want to press down on the ruler, but you don't have to put a lot of pressure when you're cutting through the stacks of paper. And so you can see by using that technique, I have an edge that's just as smooth as the edges that I got from that large cutter. So that is how you can also cut down your papers. So I'll bring in the paper piece that measures four by 12 and my two pieces that measure five by three and a quarter. I have already added some double stick tape to the back and I am going to place that down like that. Then I'll take this piece, remove the backing on it, and I'm going to take my stack of papers, use them as my guide here, so I'll butt them against that chipboard, and then I'll add approximately one eighth of an inch. So what I did was I took this pad, I put it inside, and I added about an eighth of an inch. I use my stylus to press against the chipboard and drive into the paper all the way around. And I'll even go on the inside here. And now I'm going to stand this up and just train my paper to fold. I use my finger blade and I'm just going to trim my angles or miter, my corners, whichever one you want to call it. Now I'm going to use my tape runner, add some tape to the two ends, and we're going to fold these over. And I'll do the same thing to the longer side. And usually I give myself about half an inch in border all the way around, but because I'm using scrap, I don't have the luxury of having a half an inch border going all the way around. So I'm making do with the paper sizes that I have. So now I'm just going to take my big old spatula, get that nice and stuck. Let's go ahead and do the same thing with our two pieces that measure three and a quarter by three and three eighths. And I am going to use the stripe side as the outside. So I do have the luxury on this paper of having that half inch border. I'll bring in my papers and I'm going to butt them against the chipboard and I'm going to do the same process that I did with the other stack. When I placed these pieces in, butted it against the chipboard. I gave myself an additional one eighth of an inch before I placed down that second piece. So now I'm going to trim away the excess. Again, I'll bring in my stylus, press it against the chipboard, and go all the way around, giving myself a score. And 
now I can stand this up, train my paper to fold, use my finger blade to go in and miter my corners. So now I'll take my tape, add my tape to that piece, fold it over, add my tape to that end, fold it over, and I'll add tape to these long pieces, fold over, and fold over use my big old spatula to make sure that I have everything nice and stuck. So to make my liner I am going to trim one piece down to six and seven eighths by three and that'll be the inside liner for the smaller book and then I'll take my second piece and cut it down to three and an eighth by ten now we have our two inside liner pieces. I am going to go ahead and place some tape on the chipboard portion of this project. And I'll place tape here as well. And then I'll place some tape on this piece. So then I'm going to add some tape in a thinner strip here. And then I'm going to take the same tape and I am going to place it along the edges of my piece. If you have a Xyron sticker maker, you can actually run it through the Xyron and you won't have to place any tape on this or on this piece. But for those of you who don't, this is how you can do it. And so now I'm going to peel away the tape backers from this smaller piece. Peel away the tape backer from that piece's inside liner. And then I'll take this piece And we're going to place it down like this. I'll use my big old spatula to get it nice and stuck. I'll go on the inside to make sure that I have my spine nicely defined. And then I can stand it and do it like that. And then I'll stand it again and just go across that top and square that off real nice. And just as we did on the smaller one, we are going to take our liner piece and place it down. Then I'm going to get my spine nicely defined. I'll do it like this and then I'll stand it up, go over that top and get that nice book fold look. And so now we should be able to take our papers and place them on the inside and have a really nice fit. And we do have a very good fit on that. So y'all, what I am doing is one and done for me. I'm going to take some glue and just place the glue right along the top there. And I'm going to take it. And when I place it down, I'm going to bring it as close to that fold mark as possible without being inside the mark. So when you look at it like this, you can see what I mean. So now I'll use my big old spatula to get that stuck. 
Again, a little pad like this is truly a one and done for me. So there's one. We'll remove the clips from this one. And we're just going to take it and place it down just like we did that first one. So I am going to add my glue to the back. And we're going to slide it close to that score mark. And then I'll close it to make sure that I'm not hitting the score mark. And you can see what a nice little closure I have on this. I'll open it. Use my big old spatula to get that stuck. And then I'll flip it over, getting that nice and stuck. And so there we have our two little books. I'm going to get some decorative pieces for this and I'll be right back. So for my decorative elements, I'm going to use the Simple Stories Indigo Garden 12 by 12 sticker sheet. And I'm going to use that for both pieces of my project because I think I can make it work. So I'm going to take that heart and I'm going to place it right there at the top and then I'll take this little sticker that says time to bloom, place it there. And I'm going to grab a couple of my little heart stickers and I'm just going to use them to frame out the word time to bloom. So for this one, I think I'm going to try to make this one work that says love this most and I think that's enough. So I'm going to open the inside and I'm just going to take a little butterfly, put that butterfly right there on the inside. I'll open this one and this time I'm going to take this large flower because I have more room and we're going to place that flower right there on the inside. And so y'all, that is all I'm doing. We took our scraps and we turned them into doodle pads, scratch pads, notebooks, whatever it is you want to call them, these can be what you want them to be. So as I was looking at this one, I thought it would be really cute to frame it out with two hearts and add some contrasting color. And I think that's the way that I'm going with this. So I decided to change my mind at the last minute, right before I was getting ready, to bag these and I think I'm going to take this yellow piece and put it down it says enjoy life and I actually like this look better I like the first one I had absolutely no problem with it but as I was getting ready to put the sticker sheet away I noticed that green heart and I thought well that would be a great contrast on this particular book. So that is what I went with and that is how we do it when we're crafting. We might have a plan and we might even be finished, but then we decide to tweak it or change it just a little bit. So I am going to bring in my baggie that measures four by six. Put my tall book in first and then I'll put the smaller one in like so and I'm going to just make sure that small book is even with the edge of my plastic peel away my tape backer and fold that over and now we have another set of books that we can give to keep or sell but of course we want to put a topper on it so I am going to bring in my piece that measures four and a quarter by four and on the four inch side we're going to score at one and a half. I'll fold this and when I put it down I'm going to put it down like this. Ordinarily I would be okay with this white backing showing but for this I really don't like it so I am going to take some of the scrap that I had left over and I'm going to cover that. So I am just going to take some tape. We'll place that tape down. This is just me being picky. 
Um, you guys don't have to do this if you don't want to. But like I said, it's just me being a little bit picky. And then I'm going to take this piece and we'll put it down. So now I'm going to take my scrap and I'm just going to place it down like that. It didn't cover the whole thing, but it covered enough. So then I'll trim away that excess. And so now when I put it down and we fold over, we're going to have that backing that really ties in to the colors that we use. So like I said, it was just me being a little bit picky because I thought the starkness of the white was too much against this. So I am going to take my tape runner and add some tape. I'm going to take this piece and I'm putting it down like this so that I can see how much of that clear space I want showing. So then I'm going to take this piece and just fold it over. And so now all I'm going to do is take my little branding sticker and place it on the back. A lot of you asked about the sticker. If you have access to any type of graphic design program, Canva, Adobe, there are a lot of applications out there where you can play around and make your own. If you have access to Cricut Design Space, you can actually do it in Cricut Design Space. I used Adobe, but I could have done this in Cricut if I wanted to. At some point, I can't make any promises when. I will try to put together a very quick tutorial on how you can make your own labels if you don't have a Cricut, but you do have some type of a graphic design program that maybe you haven't used that often. And so there we have it, y'all. We have our second set of giftables or sellables. These are so easy to make, and we're making them using scrap. Scrap that probably would have sat around for a while until you figured out what to do with it. Well, in the scrap series, we are finding ways to take that scrap and turn it into something that can be given as a gift, kept for yourself, or sold at a craft fair, or online stores. You think that these are just adorable and the sizes are so convenient for dropping in the purse. And the last thing that I'm going to do is I am going to punch a hole here at the top. If you're interested in the hole punch or the cellophane baggies, the glue or the tape, please make sure you check the description box because I do have a link to my Amazon storefront. And guys, this information is accessible 24 seven. So please make sure you're checking that description box for valuable information. So here they are. Aren't they just the sweetest? And wasn't this the simplest process? So these are things that we would go to the store and buy. We don't have to. If you watch me, if you follow me, we are going to remove and eliminate a lot of the things that we thought we had to buy at the store, but we now know that we can make it. Even our newbies will be making things like this in no time. That's the purpose of my channel, to build a welcoming community that shows you how to take beautiful papers and turn them into something absolutely useful. Crafting is fun for the sake of crafting, but you double the pleasure when you're crafting with fun and with a purpose. So guys, I hope that you have enjoyed today's awesome project. If you have, please hit the like button. If you are not a subscriber to my channel, I hope that you will consider subscribing. And I kind of sort of feel like breaking out into that song that played at the end of Carol Burnett's show. I'm so glad that we had this time together. Remember that song? I'll spare you having to listen to me sing it, but I am so glad that we had this time together. As always, you guys, please be safe, be kind, be the reason someone smiles today. Happy crafting, and we'll chat later. Bye.